Hey everyone, welcome to BCP Med. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the basicity of several cyclic nitrogen compounds, ranging from aniline, papyridine, all the way to parazidine. Why are we going to look at these? Well, these molecules provide an excellent representation of the different effects that impact the basicity of organic molecules writ large, such as residence effects, inductive effects, lone pair, lone pair repulsions, orbital effects, and even the dipole moment of a molecule. Let's go ahead and get started. So shown below are the several nitrogen compounds that we're going to be looking at. As you can see, there's a wide variety of them, including several pentagon and hexagon geometries with one and two nitrogens in the ring. Some of them include double bonds, while some of the nitrogens are only single bonded. I'm also going to go ahead and below provide the pKa H values, or the pKa values of the conjugate acid. So these values are read such that the larger the value is, the more basic the molecule is. The reason for that is that the larger the pKa H value is, the less acidic the conjugate acid is. And the less acidic the conjugate acid is, the more basic the original molecule is to start with. So as you can see from here, the most basic here would be the papyridine ring, or this structure which I am going to circle here. That is going to be the most basic. On the other hand, the least basic is going to be this structure here. So let's go ahead and start off with the most basic. Why is papyridine, this one here, the most basic molecule? Well, if you'll notice, all of the other nitrogens are somehow adjacent to or part of a double bonded system. This one is not. This nitrogen is sp3 hybridized, which means its lone pair is in an sp3 orbital with no other interactions with double bonds, pi orbitals, or somehow being in an sp2 orbital. As a result, this lone pair is more loosely held by the nitrogen and is more available for other hydro for uh, protons to come by and latch onto it. As a result, this sp3 hybridization is going to make this molecule the most basic. Now, after addressing that, let's go ahead and just move left to right. So aniline, why is aniline where it falls on the table? Why is it so much less basic than papyridine? Well, aniline, which is this molecule here on the left, actually has a lone pair on that nitrogen, which is adjacent to that pi system, right? And in fact, we can go ahead and represent the resonance structures of aniline as follows. So let's go ahead and look at how these resonance structures form. Well, this lone pair here, being adjacent to the double bonds, can go ahead and push there such that the uh, negative charge density is now on this carbon. This can continue such that each of the carbons at the ortho and the para positions are then going to have a negative charge on them, right? So all three of those carbons are going to develop negative charges. Because of that, the lone pair is no longer localized on the nitrogen. It's not stuck there. And as a result, that lone pair is not available to protons in the same way that, say, the lone pair in papyridine is. And so being less available to incoming protons makes the molecule less basic. And that is why it is going to have an appreciably, or rather significantly lower uh, pKaH than papyridine. So I'm going to go ahead and erase this, and we'll move on to our next molecule, which is pyridine. Pyridine is this molecule here, and in this case, you'll notice that its pKaH value is once again quite low, but higher than that of aniline. Why is that the case? Well, the nitrogen once again has a lone pair here, but that lone pair is in a unique position. It is not actually going to be able to engage in a resonance delocalization with the pi bonds. Why not? Well, if you look at the orbital picture of this molecule, you'll notice that the lone pair on the nitrogen is actually orthogonal or perpendicular to the rest of the pi system. This is because it's held in an sp2 orbital since the nitrogen is already double bonded with its uh, lone electron participating in the aromatic system there that the circular electron system shown above. And so because the nitrogen is already double bonded and already participating in this resonance delocalization, the second lone pair cannot. It is uh, orthogonal, and so it is locked in that sp2 orbital, which means it is actually more available than the lone pair of aniline because it's not delocalized. However, because it's in an sp2 orbital, not an sp3 orbital, it is going to be held more tightly than that of papyridine. And so it is going to be lower in basicity than papyridine, but higher than aniline. So less basic than an sp3, but more basic than one that is delocalized in a ring. 
Now, let's go ahead and look at our next molecule, which is going to be pyrrole. So pyrrole is this pentagon structure here, which also has a lone pair on the nitrogen. That's what makes it basic. However, pyrrole is significantly less basic than most of the other molecules here. Why is that the case? Well, pyrrole has quite a few resonance structures. This lone pair on the nitrogen can delocalize itself to give several resonance structures where the negative charge density is going to get go ahead and be distributed onto all of the uh, atoms in this ring. And the nitrogen and all four carbons are actually going to end up carrying this partial negative charge, which is pretty interesting, right? So I uh, skipped one of the resonance structures here. So right, if you notice, each of these carbons is going to end up with a partial negative charge. Because the lone pair is so effectively delocalized across all of these carbons, the, it is very non-available for protons to latch onto. And in fact, there's actually a special effect that goes on with pyrrole, and that is known as aromaticity. Because the lone pair is in a cyclic system with six electrons, it has a special stabilization which arises from molecular orbital theory. And I'm not going to get into why that's the case, but just be aware that pyrrole, in addition to just having very many resonance delocalizations, actually has an additional special delocalization, which is why it's particularly less basic than aniline, even though aniline also has quite a few resonance delocalizations. So let's go ahead and get rid of that. So now that we've talked about the molecules on the left, we can go ahead and move on to those on the right, which are a little bit more complicated. So let's look at this molecule here, which is known as imidazole. So imidazole is going to actually have a combination of resonance and orbital effects. So the lone pairs on these two nitrogens are going to be a little bit different. And you can see that from this resonance picture here that I've drawn. I'm going to go ahead and erase the lone pair on the aniline. So the lone pair on one of these nitrogens is not available, whereas the other one is. The single bonded nitrogen lone pair can go ahead and delocalize into the ring just like pyrrole, right? This is exactly the same as pyrrole. You see these same resonance structures, right? All of the carbons are going to end up carrying a partial negative charge. And in this case, we actually have a nitrogen which carries a partial negative charge, which we didn't see in pyrrole. So this nitrogen, the one that is already double bonded in the base structure, is going to carry a partial negative. And an interesting fact is that that nitrogen's lone pair, this lone pair right here, is orthogonal to the pi system just like in pyridine because it is already double bonded. That pi bond that you see in the base uh, structure is the or, uh, pi orbital interacting with the nitrogen, not the lone pair. So we have a combination of one nitrogen being in a locked in an sp2 orbital for its lone pair and the other lone pair being delocalized. So which nitrogen is going to be more basic? This one. This nitrogen is going to be more basic because its lone pair is not delocalized. And moreover, because one of the resonance structures puts a negative charge density on that nitrogen through delocalization, it is going to significantly increase its basicity. As a result, this molecule is going to be appreciably more basic than pyridine, even though both are sp2 orbitals and both are not delocalized because resonance puts a negative charge density on this nitrogen. So it's going to kick it up in basicity a little bit. Let's go ahead and move on now. And these molecules are where it's really going to get tricky, these last three, because these are effects that you don't always see in uh, the intro organic chemistry courses, but are very important and are sometimes come up in exam questions and things like that. So I'm actually going to skip over this molecule for now, and I'm going to jump to this one here. This molecule is known as pyrimidine. So it's very similar to pyridine, but it's called pyrimidine. And pyrimidine is going to have a significantly lower pKAH than pyridine. It is much less basic. Why is that the case? Well, both of these nitrogens have sp2 orbitals, and neither of them is able to delocalize into the ring. They're both locked in sp2 orbitals. So what is the difference? Well, nitrogen, in addition to being able to occasionally delocalize the resonance, is also going to be inductively withdrawing. It is going to have a dipole moment pointing towards each of the nitrogens, right? That inductive effect is going to pull the lone pairs to be more fixed onto the atom and less available, right? Inductive effects decrease basicity generally when they're pulling the electron density. So the inductive effect of those two nitrogens on each other 
decreases their basicity mutually. And quite a bit, actually. It decreases it by a, a log scale value of 10, which is 10,000 times less basic than uh, pyridine. So it's an appreciable effect. The inductive effect is significant, even though we typically think of resonance as being stronger. So then why is this molecule here more basic, right? The nitrogens are closer, so the inductive effect should be stronger, right? The inductive effect should pull on these lone pairs here even more strongly and make them less basic. But there's another effect at play, and that is known as lone pair, lone pair repulsions. So when two lone pairs are so close to one another, there's a, because they're partially negatively charged, there's going to be an electrostatic repulsion, a coulombic repulsion between those lone pairs, which destabilizes their position next to one another. If we were to protonate one of those lone pairs, so we're going to take this lone pair and make it into an H plus there, it would alleviate the electrostatic repulsion. And in fact, it, the adjacent lone pair would stabilize the proton a little bit due to the negative charge density. So in this case, this molecule is more basic than pyrimidine because its close lone pairs repel one another, favoring the protonation of one of the sites. Last and certainly not least is this really interesting molecule here. And th this is probably my favorite example because it's a really wacky example of uh, how very niche effects impact basicity. So in this case, we have two lone pairs, and the lone pairs are going to be on the nitrogens just like in pyrimidine, but in this case, the nitrogens are further apart, right? In this case, they are one carbon apart. Now they're two in the pyrimidine, in the pyridine, right? Sorry, let me say that again. In the pyridine here on the left, we have one nitrogen. And on the pyrimidine here, we have two nitrogens, which are one carbon away. In this case, though, they're two carbons away here. But we've decreased the pKa H value significantly. We've decreased the basicity of the molecule. The inductive effect should be weaker, though. Why is this molecule, if the inductive effect is weaker, becoming less basic, right? And, you know, the lone pairs are moving further apart, so we're having less lone pair repulsion, but they weren't very close in pyrimidine, this molecule here, to begin with. So what's going on? Well, if you notice, I'm going to go ahead and erase the box to clean it up a little bit. These nitrogens are 180 degrees from each other. Right? So the inductive effects point exactly in the opposite direction. And so the dipole moment of this molecule is going to be zero. Why does that matter? Well, because nitrogen is normally inductively withdrawing, it typically pulls a little bit of electron density onto itself. That makes nitrogen a little bit more basic. Right, Pulling electron density onto yourself inductively makes you more basic, which is why um, molecules like piperidine are more basic than ammonia, because even though they're both sp3, ammonia is only NH3. It has no alkyl groups. Um, the piperidine molecule, the nitrogen, can pull electron density from the alkyl groups, which makes it a little bit more basic, 11.2, uh, whereas ammonia tends to be around 9.15, 9.2. So it's appreciably more basic due to that electron withdrawing effect of the nitrogen. In this case of this molecule here, because the nitrogens are exactly opposite and there's no dipole moment, the nitrogens are not able to inductively withdraw from the carbons because their effect is sort of net canceled out by the other nitrogen. And as a result of not having a dipole moment, there's less electron density on the nitrogens and they are going to be less basic. So in this case, it's not an orbital effect, it's not a resonance effect, it's not even a lone pair effect. It's the fact that the dipole moment of the molecule cancels out and the nitrogen is no longer able to inductively pull electron density from the carbons onto itself. And that makes a really significant effect. Combined with the fact that these uh, lone pairs are in sp2 orbitals, we drop the acidity, or drop the basicity rather, all the way almost down to zero. So this is, the conjugate acid is going to be very, very strong. This molecule will not want to protonate. And with that, we've actually gone ahead and reached the end of the content for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching, and if you enjoy what you saw, please like and subscribe to the channel. If you want to learn more, check out our other videos in the chemistry playlist, and if you're looking to branch out, check out our other science playlists as well. See you next time!